Hey guys, welcome back to Propelio TV. My name is Daryl Dyke. It's my co-host Steve Rosenberg, and you're listening to the Real Estate Power Hour. We got a great show today. We have Ron Carlson, who has a ton of experience in all different avenues in real estate. So excited to have him on. So we'll be right back with him. Propelio TV is sponsored by Noble Mortgage and Investments, Bashkip Tracing, Think Multifamily, CreativeCastro.com, and Lifener. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Again, you're listening to the Real Estate Power Hour with Daryl Dyke and Steve Rosenberg, and we have Ron Carlson, the Ron Carlson, with the, on, the, the Ron Carlson. on the show today. And if you don't know who Ron is, he you is. Will. Uh, you're going to learn about him. Some things you probably don't want to know yes, about Ron today. True. This is true. But uh, no, he has a really good story. You know, he's one of these guys that's that's been in the industry for a long time. Mm-hmm. He's got a lot of battle wounds, a lot of successes as well. But uh, he owned a company called Renovation uh, Gurus here in, in Still Dallas. It. Still does it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not taking on new clients right now, I understand? That's correct. Yeah, we're pulling back. We might come back and make a But a you've got, you made two, a really but... good name for yourself with that company oh, yeah. here in Dallas. Yeah. And, uh, and then you have your own company where you buy and hold, which you're doing more now. But um, got just a lot of experience. Uh, my company, Noble Mortgage Investments, we had an event uh, that we do here in Dallas called Basics and Breakfast. We're bringing in a speaker, and he came and talked about how to work with a contractor. And you can just tell he's got a lot of experience with that and by accident. By oh, accident, it, right? I, you learn off of other people's mistakes. You learn off of your own mistakes. You try to do it right. and turn out it, you could have done it better and you do it the best that you can and then all of a sudden something breaks. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's just the world that, that we live in, right? So tell everybody, how, how long have you been in real estate and what got you in? Are you, are you one of these accident investors or are you just... Oh, uh, no. What, uh, so let's start with what got me in. My dad was a new home builder. Okay, and, so you, uh, had, you, had, you were in the family. It was in the uh, family. Yeah, he, he was actually the right-hand man of a new home builder. I wish okay. that he owned it, but he was just the guy that ran, ran the show. And I don't ever remember not swinging a hammer. And one time uh, during some summer break, my dad wanted cheap labor. Or they wanted cheap labor. So they hired me all summer long to dig a hole about 7, 10 feet deep, about 50 feet wide, and 100 yards long. I was putting in a humongous sewer line. So I drove a bobcat all, all summer long. Oh, wow. And on one of those days, uh, the owner of the company was like, hey, come over to my house. We'll eat a bag of lunch, have a sandwich or something like that. And I was probably like 10 years old. I, don't, I was young. I just asked the guy, how'd you come rich? Apparently, my dad yelled at me later, you're not supposed to say that to people. <laughs> and he said, well, it's all because of real estate. He goes, a couple of years ago, I became a millionaire. And he goes, prior to that, I was a multimillionaire, right? Uh, before he got divorced, he was a multimillionaire. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, what happened? He's, he's doing it's it like, wrong. He's going backwards. Oh, no, yeah. y'all got it. Y'all oh, got we got it. a divorce, yeah. That'll do it. Yeah, so then I just was always focused on, on real estate. So fast forward, I don't know, I think I've been doing real estate now for nine, ten years ago in 2009, so nine years, I think. Okay. And I you got it right after the crash. Yeah. Uh, you good, know, I was, just, I was just reading books and doing audio books, and everyone told me I could buy at 50, 60, 70 cents on the dollar, and I went out there and I just started wholesaling, and I did. I was like, wow, that's buying at 70 cents on the dollar is easy stuff, because I didn't even know what a crash was then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I just knew that. I read a book. You're welcome, and, by the way. We, we went through it. Oh, yeah. thank we, you so we much. We walked that walk. Man, there, the people before me have paved uh, some roads, for sure, that yeah, I Yeah, and people before on. me paved, too, you know? Sure, sure. There's some old-timers that, that give me hell. Like, oh, you don't yeah, know what it's like. You don't know like. what it's like. You just paid for 25%. Yeah. yeah. Talking about the old-timers, it always is crazy. You know, people used to have to go to like, a library or something to go run comps for them. All I know, right? Like, imagine yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, so I just started off whole, wholesaling, and when you wholesale, you learn from other people's mistakes. You know, you try to comp it out, and I mean, wholesalers now, they purposely lie. I wasn't purposely lying. Yeah. I might have been. I might have lied, but I wasn't trying to do it on purpose, and you know. You call you, that exaggerating, the wholesale <laughs> business. Yeah, yeah. Make, put in the property in the best light. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Perspective. Uh, so, yes. you know, you're, you're, you're buying houses, you're selling houses, or wholesaling houses, and people are like, oh, man, I ran into this, I ran into plumbing problems, ran into this, and then... Somewhere right around 2012, we started realizing, man, we're giving away all of our equity. These people are, you know, I'm making a three and five thousand dollar fee, and these people are making thirty, forty thousand. Let's figure out how to raise some capital. So we raised some capital. Uh, we started buying some houses, and we got to about uh, five, six houses, and we just broke our contractor. Like literally, broke him to pieces. I waited one time. I bought a house. I waited like. 30 days for him to even get a rehab bid back to me because wow. he didn't have enough crews. He was working with another investor. That other investor was doing five or six, seven houses a month. We started doing five, and he could really only handle two or three. So, all right, his name was Jose Garcia, and we're like, we'll just hire another Jose Garcia. So we went out, hired another Jose Garcia. That did his, It was horrible. Uh, we, had, we, we went through probably 10, 15 contractors in about six months. Wow. I had one contractor steal twenty one grand from me on one house, $24,000 from me on another house. Uh, we had to fire people, and finally it just got so frustrated. We fired everybody, 
and I hired a guy that I thought was better at rehabs than I am. And uh, we're like, hey, just come run our rehabs for us. Figure out how to build crews, build subs, all that. And that was the start of Renovation Crews. And then right after that, we had a friend reach out to us. And it was like, hey, look, y'all are rehabbing houses. We rehab my house. And we're like, sure, we'll take it for a run. And we thought we were prepared to handle other people's rehabs. But we turned out internal. We didn't have the processes to do so. I mean, we didn't have the communication. We didn't have email tags. We didn't have weekly updates. And so by rehabbing other people's houses and rehabbing our own houses, we slowly started building renovation gurus. Um, kind of selfishly, we were building up our vendors so we could get cheaper pricing, and we were building up our team so we could rehab our own houses. And what we realized is if we just rehabbed our own houses, we didn't have enough work for all of our crews. Okay. And if you don't have enough work for all your crews, then your crews will leave you. Yeah, you lose your crews at that point. Yeah. So we're like, well, let's go rehab other people's houses. Even if we're not making money, we're not losing our crews, and then when we need our crews, we can have our crews. And so... That went on for a long time. We were in about 30 rehabs a month for several years, and we were doing hundreds of rehabs a month for ourselves and other people. And uh, just recently, we have scaled that back because uh, we realized how much more money we can make on a piece of real estate investment versus managing all the headaches for somebody else to do the, the remodeling. And it's a lot more work and a lot more management than the average investor thinks it is to sure. actually manage a rehab right. Sure. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my my synopsis and snapshot of did you, what I did and where this, I came from. So like when you when you kind of got into this and you were thinking, okay, we can do this on the side and, and just break even with our guys, but when we need them, we have mm -hmm. them. At some point, did you realize like, okay, this this is now a business, income, profit, loss, accounting. Yeah, yeah. You know, leadership. Who's in charge <clears throat> of who? Skew. I mean, did, is, did that slowly come on or was that like hitting you in the face like no. all of a sudden it's like we have a problem no it was definitely uh as you needed it everything i've done is survival of the fittest or or survive to do do what i do to survive like we started wholesaling because we need money right we started right. making money and we stopped we wanted to make more money maybe that's greed but maybe that's business smarts i don't know and then when you know we opened renovation gurus because we we're getting burned by contractors and matter of fact later on i became an rmlo because uh, we want to start owner financing properties. What's an RLMO? RMLO, Registered Mortgage Loan Officer. Got it. Uh, so we actually went through the whole entire process. I became an RMLO, and uh, we did that because we want to owner finance our own houses. And then I, it, I thought if I was an RMLO, it would be easy. But then nobody wanted to sponsor me as an RMLO because I was high risk. I'd never done any transactions, and I wanted to do owner financing on my own personal houses. So yeah. then I had to. Register. I wouldn't sponsor you either. Uh, right? <laughs> so then I had to register with the state to become a mortgage company. And there again, I just did it because I had to do it because yeah, nobody else would sponsor me. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, and same with the accounting. You start cutting checks, and then all of a sudden we're getting hit with like franchise taxes and stuff. Like, crap, what's a franchise tax? I don't even yeah. know about that. You know? know. You, you know about them. Oh, you yeah. know about franchise taxes. I remember the first time I got a tax bill on my contents of my office. You know, they, they taxed yeah. me. I was like, what is this? Yeah. I didn't even know what it was. You know, when you start a company, you sure. don't realize this. I didn't realize about franchise taxes. Yeah. I remember. Our, I'm like, I thought it was a joke. I threw it away. Ha, ha, ha. We got we got. We <laughs> nice try. Nice try. I'm not buying it. That's I'm burning it. Right? Yeah. It's a pink one now. I'm still burning it. Yeah. Yeah, and in, in the beginning, we had problems with, we hired this lady as a 1099. Uh, we fired her because she was milking the clock. She reported us to Texas Workforce Commission. The Texas Workforce Commission voted her to actually be a W-2 employee, not a 1099. So oh, I had to pay wow. back taxes and all the penalties and all the fees for Ooh, that's fun. for every month that she she was there. Um, yeah, you just kind of learn, you know, your the, like the franchise tax and any other tax. We had a, a small lease, twelve hundred dollars a month, little thousand square foot a uh, place when we first started actually when we first started we started in a game room with my business partner but then uh we started peeing on the toilet seats and stuff like that so his wife kicked us out <laughs> <laughs> that'll do it and we got this little uh, office and then like a year later somebody came to us and was like okay you have to pay this much money because you're responsible for this portion of the property taxes we signed up for a triple net lease yeah but we didn't really know what we were doing so sure. like well, how much is that i have to pay tax on this guy's building yeah yeah you know so yeah it was just kind of survival of the fittest and you get sideswiped a lot in new so, business I, I got a question so it, it sounds like you you've started you started multiple businesses but all of those were kind of one-offs to what the real business was yeah so the real business was buying real estate that's correct yes D do you ever think that in, in I own a property management company. So mm -hmm. we, we get people and all of a sudden it's like, we have maintenance. Okay, well, let's start doing maintenance in-house. We start doing maintenance in-house and we're like, okay, well, we can do maintenance for other people. We got the crews. Now we're doing maintenance for other people. Now we're dealing with 
time, attendance. We're dealing with, you know, uh, inventory. Now we're dealing with owners that mm -hmm. aren't, you know, we, now we're going down this whole path of being a maintenance company, sure. having supplies, getting a warehouse to store it all, machines, and we're going, wait a second, this isn't even what we do. Like, we're a property <laughs> management company. And, you know, we, we learned very quickly um, that stick with what you do, stick with your core, which sure. is that business. Because, again, we, you know, again, and I remember talking to our business coach, and we were talking about it, and he goes, well, um, your clients, he goes, they need their haircuts, right? And I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, they, they have to get their haircut, don't they? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, why don't you guys open a haircutting place? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, they need their clothes dry cleaned. Why don't you guys start dry cleaning clothes? Wow. And I'm like, he's like, wow, I should. Yeah. <laughs> his point no, was. No, well, you should not. Yeah, yeah. And, and his, point, his point is like, stick to your core model. Sure. Stick to what, and it sounds like you, you had a real estate business. You did these others because you couldn't get what you needed, obviously, out sure. of necessity. Yeah. Do you, in hindsight, looking back, were, were those smart moves or were those moves that you go, man, I wasted a lot of time, a lot of money that I could have focused on real estate, but these they sidetracked me? They definitely sidetracked us in some aspects, but they got us stronger in some aspects. Like, for example, we used to take crews. I took a handyman. He was a handyman. He was making no money. And I made him into one of my best subcontractors. You know, he was probably making fifteen hundred dollars a month, and now he's running four or five crews for us, and he's probably pushing one hundred, one hundred fifty a year, right? So uh, there's ways that I would have done it different now, or that we do it now than when we first started. But those are just growing pains. You're just sure. like, yeah. hey, look, I need to go find somebody. You don't know. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah, right? like day laborers. Uh, I hate day laborers because there's no accountability, and they can just milk the clock, and they look like they're working. But once you add up what's actually going Swing on. Swing a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've literally seen people sweep the same floor the same day multiple times. Like, what are you doing? Like, go swing a hammer, Sounds like you Steve know? Steve at work. That, that would yeah. be me, yeah. I know Steve's business partner. Pete's I mean, always telling me, Steve. Pete, is, yeah, I'm that guy. He's just making noise in his office to make sure. I'm going to go to the bathroom. Here, here's a story that I, I don't share. I don't think I've ever shared it publicly, but I'm going to share it with you. One time we hired this electrician. We found him off Craigslist. And he's like, look, if you bring me beer all night long, I will rewire this whole house. So we were just bringing beer and bringing beer. And then uh, I guess he was reconnecting the main to the house. And we showed up, and he's like, I need to hire my friend for the day. We were like, okay, we'll bring more beer, right? So we show up, and he has a live power line in one hand. And his friend is doing something in the other line. So he's like this, hanging off the side of my roof with a live power line. Oh, my God. And his friend's doing something. And we're like, oh, yeah, we probably should. <laughs> this is not the guy we should be hiring Did he have right his now. 40? <laughs> he had his 40 yeah. ounce uh, in his That was the moment where, like, it was really in the beginning, beginning. And we're like, yeah, we definitely need some more policies That's one of the hindsights where you go, this could have been a mistake. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. What, uh, what alcoholics <laughs> like to refer to as a moment of clarity. Oh, man. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, and... You know, that was, say, a day labor, but then he was like, hey, I don't have money for my hotel tonight. Can you all give me money for my hotel? And, hey, I'm going to bring my friend, but, like, he's illegal. You know, can you pay him in cash? You know, just things like that. And then we're all saying like you adopted somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's still with me. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We just found out that that's not who, who we, we want to be working with. You right. know, you want to – it's okay to take someone and help them out, but you got to have – some merit to to what you're doing and then by that you start building policies and procedures and this is who we do and i didn't even know what a w9 form was until my accountant's like hey you have like 500 subs and none of them have filled out a w9 form you're, you're gonna like pay taxes on all of them for a 1099 <laughs> if you don't go get this w9 form and uh, we didn't get three or four of them. we paid a couple of grand in taxes on, yeah. on some other yeah. people but I, we didn't even know we we're just we know about real estate and the rest would just come and that's kind of how it happened but now I know, and no one teaches. Everyone just like go into business, and it's all right. But there's so many laws and regulations and rules, and yeah, you don't know. This you don't know you don't, yeah, you don't. You don't realize it. And, and a lot of people, I think, is you know, it, it's the it's the architect, our operator, that they can do it better. Like they they have a skill that they can do better. And you know, a lot of times it's I'm working for someone else. I can do better than someone yeah. else. Yeah. So I'm gonna go do it myself. And all of a sudden they realize like, man, you know. Now I got to know about accounting. I got to know about taxes. I got yeah. like I just want to be a good operator because I'm better than him. But the sure. reality is, is when you're doing that, all of a sudden you're wearing multiple. You know that, and I know that, right? It's you like the e myth, you know. The, yep. the book, the e myth. Have you read mm -hmm. that? It's yeah. A story about the woman that she likes to make. Uh, she pies. Bake, makes pies, sure. so she opens a pie company. She realizes, you know, that's the least thing she. Yeah. She can't bake pies anymore. That's She's a business, she's doing. right? Yeah. You know? And yeah. yeah, all the other aspects, the financial so, part, the accounting, all that's different. There's any, about any, uh, different parts. any moment of truth horror story bottom hit the bottom uh, kind of 
Yeah, how much time do you have? <laughs> I know. Well, before the show, we were talking. He said his his, his biggest mistake was a. You lost how much on a flip? Uh, over two hundred grand. Two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, we were just starting. We didn't really didn't have any money, but we were making money, just not on that particular house. So I mean, we were popping rehabs for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars. And our motto has always been pay back your lender. We talked about that a little bit sure. too. Sure. Yeah. Uh, pay back your lender because if you bleed your lender, you don't pay back your lender. You can never do a Done. deal. I would rather lose money, pay back my lender, and then borrow more money from that lender, make it up, than never to have a lender to, and, and to that, fund a deal. I think that's also just part of the character of the person. Oh right? yeah, big sure. And, and you probably, I'm sure, it's a lot of what you loan and who you loan to is on the character, right? Of course. I mean, that, that's all it is, right? I mean, yeah. not all, but a good portion. So yeah. if you don't have your name and you're not trustworthy, no yeah. one's going to do business with you. That's right. It's not just lending. It's probably any... Because, that look, it, if you screw someone over, like Daryl, you're probably screwing other people over in other places, you know? And so other contractors, other vendors, other... You know what I mean? It's just... It, it's it's synonymous with the person. It doesn't stop with one thing. Sure. So that, I think that's just your character that you say, hey, I'm paying my lender back. But you probably do that with everybody, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, I mean, I try to, oh, you know, all you have is your handshake. So if, Absolutely. I mean, we can sign paperwork and everything like that, but let's say the paperwork goes south and we can't work it out and be gentlemen about it, then that's going to be a, a ding on your, your character as well. And I like to sleep well at night. So, yep. um, yeah, you can so never go wrong doing the right thing is what I like to say. This is true. You can this never true. go wrong doing the right thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we, uh, we bought this house. It had an 11-inch drop on it. It was about a 4,000-square-foot house with an 11-inch drop on the foundation. Okay. So Slab? The fa- uh, slab, yeah. yeah. Uh, foundation guy gets in there, and we're like, "Well, you got to do interior piers. Just you know, knock out the floor." And I showed up one day, and uh, so actually, here's what happened: is I hired a guy that was Mister Fix It to do my full remodel. My fifty thousand dollar remodel turned into about a two hundred thousand dollar remodel. Um, also, we thought that we could sell it for like the five fifty range. And I think we ended up selling for three seventy five. So, how, how you, are you? Uh, I'm just for people that want to know. <laughs> it. it on the surface, they'd go, man, this guy's a moron. How do you do that? But the reality is, is when, you, when you're in the heat of battle doing this, yeah. it, it all makes sense at the time, right? Yeah. I mean, when you're doing this, all the numbers, I'm sure you did your math. Oh, yeah, and we'd already done a couple flips. So, yeah, and so maybe you can explain to people how this unfolds. Because I've, I've done these deals like this. I've been involved. Sure. I've seen people. And hindsight, right, and people go, man, I can't believe you misjudged it that much. It's like, it's not that easy, right? When you, when you open up a, a house and, and you start opening up beams and, and the walls, it can be a Pandora's box. Sure. And there's no price limit of what that could cost you. So I'm just curious, what, what actually happened? So uh, you can hold his hand if it, if it really bothers yeah. you. <laughs> I know, right? He's gonna need a hug after oh, telling man, I might, I might have hug. to cry. Uh, you can go well, back. So it probably lighting. starts with the valuation, thinking you're gonna get five fifty. Well, right? no, that's not true because my I somehow in the middle of my rehab, I justified putting more money into it. I'm gonna get a higher ARV. So okay. my value was actually what my value was. Um, so but the numbers I, but I over lie. but I over rehab the house and I over rehab the house. Well, for a couple of different reasons. One. Uh, two big things happened that put me in a lot of trouble. One, the foundation guy uh, was tearing up and putting in his interior piers, and then he was like, uh, I just have to keep digging this stuff up because there was like brick in a lot of the house, and it was like brick under that, and then brick under that, brick under that, and that was the slab. There was no actual slab. So he kept digging down looking for a slab, and then wow. he hit dirt and chicken wire. So that's it, how you know, the chicken wire. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom. Which is <laughs> probably why, why it had uh, foundation problems in the first place, because it was built out of bricks and chicken wire. Unbelievable. Yeah, so I showed up one day, and literally every single, I could see dirt around the whole entire board of the whole house. Every single piece of brick was moved, because in order to get his hole here, he had to move all the brick over here because of how it was staggered. Right? Wow. And then uh, he also said, uh, Mr. Fix-It, he said to, uh, one time, uh, he said, well, it was easier for me to take off the sheetrock than to repair the sheetrock. The cracks were so bad in the house, it's just easier for me to take off. And about that moment, the city showed up, and we had not pulled a single permit on the property. So when you do that, and you're down to a slab, then you're down to sheetrock, or taking off your, your sheetrock, then they're like, re-insulate it, code rewire it. To code now. Now it's up to code. Yeah, matter of fact, if I fast forward all the way when this thing was done, we were up to code the prior year, and we didn't have our final inspection. So when it was all said and done, completed the wiring wasn't up to code because the year had changed. had changed from december to january i called them in december and said let's do a final they said we won't be back until like january 4th they came january 4th and they said okay now your house is out of not oh, up to wow. code you have to do this this and this it wasn't that much but you know an extra 800 bucks or whatever whatever it was 
And then there was an HOA involved as well. So we have the city involved, the HOA. I have no concrete. Santa's coming Mr. next, man. I have Mr. <laughs> fix it, fixing this property, and I have no sheetrock on my walls. So I think it was like a 3,500 square foot house or something like that. I mean, now I, I'm at the city's mercy and the HOA's mercy to redo everything and up to code. What, what kind of time frame are we talking? Like what? two years. Two years. And I had Man, that's and a lot I, of sleepless nights. I had yeah. a 12% loan on it. Damn. Oh, she had a hard money loan on it. Yeah. Well, private. A private. private, on private it. Yeah. Okay. So, let me ask you this. And for people that go through this, because you know, I think that when you go through these battles, I, I, number one, I think it makes you stronger and it makes you smarter. Sure. And you probably learned a ton of lessons. Oh, that you so won't much. Repeat. So much. But in my my opinion is is that when you're going through these things, you don't really realize you're going through it. Right? You're correct. just kind of working the problem and trying to, or at least that's how I think, and I don't know if that's how other people, yeah. you're just kind of working the problem, trying to get the solution. I don't think solution. you're appreciating what you're going through. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's kind of like you're in the heat of battle and yeah. the adrenaline, but a two, year, two years is a long time. I mean, yeah. Yeah. did you like? Did you ever think at some point, like, maybe I should just fold this thing and, and you know? I mean, there, it goes or is back that not to even it, an option? It was never an option. It was just like, buy more houses. Keep figure out, it. figure out how to fund this thing that's just sucking you dry just get a, it, until you're done. Because I have to pay this guy back. It was yeah. more, hey, I'm not going to take a paycheck. I'll eat beans and rice. It, it is what do. it is. I mean, there, and there was so much more to it. We went through like three general contractors on it. My AC guy, I, we hired him, and we're like, hey, you do what you got to do, and we'll work around you. Well, somewhere once we started ripping everything else and we we started pouring new concrete, we're like, let's just make this an open concept because we pretty much took out all the sporting walls anyways. So now we're running like. Uh, LVLs and they're like 24 foot LVLs. You open up the kitchen room, dining room, and the living room all at once. It's like a, it's a good span. It's a 30 foot span or wow. something like that. And uh, if you know what an LVL is, it's the sport beam that we're supporting from one side to the other because we have no center for it. Are those now. exposed? Is uh, that an exposed? They beam were or? not. They were going to be sheet rocked over. They're okay. exposed at the time of of where I'm at here. And um, I see guys like, okay, cool. So we leave, we come back, and somehow, some way, he decided to cut every single LVL I had. So he could run his lines through it. Oh my gosh! So now we're like you walk in and you're like, you, like, <laughs> yeah, and like each one was like 750 bucks. Wow! And so then we're like, well, now what do we do? So then we ended up taking out all the AC stuff and then sistering them and bolting them together because that's what the inspector wanted us to do. And so it just goes on. We had a guy installed tile in our bathroom. It was travertine. It was like this. You know, that's, that's coming back. That's not yeah, well. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then we were just like, well, let's add a room here. You know, we can add square footage. And then that didn't really work out for us because it was above the garage and you needed two, two by tens and there's two by sixes there. So the city's like, well, you added this. Now you got to rip it all out and do the two by 10. And so it's just story after story Jeez. after story. And, uh, we didn't know what a rendering was. We didn't know what architectural drawings were at the time. We're very good at those now. We're very good at working with HOAs and we're very good at working with the city. But like the city's like, yeah, we need a drawing of what the outside of the house is going to look like because this particular house had two doors and I actually took two doors and made it into one door and moved the staircase to the side of the house, which is a big no-no because you jack up all of your structural yeah. stuff. But don't buy a house with two front doors. That's the moral of the story. You're, right? <laughs> <There> you <laughs> You're go. like, I don't know which one to go to. Yeah. And man, we're just trucking away, trucking away. Oh, the renderings, the rendering drawings. Uh, so they're like, yeah. Those are architects, a, right? They're, they're supposed to be an architectural drawing right. or and signed out and stamped out by an engineer. And so I pretty much got out, you know, my piece of construction paper, drew out the house, went and gave it to the HOA, gave it to the city, and oh man, they were just not. They were, probably like, they were not kidding? happy with me after that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, yeah, this is what's gonna look like, you know. Here's what the outside. Like, Stamped Ron, <laughs> dear Ron. There yeah, you go. right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we literally didn't know. Nobody on my team knew, and that's just those lessons that you, yeah. we now know. Now, I mean, I can I can go through a forty thousand dollar rehab in like three weeks right now. So okay, so for the people that are watching, I guess the one thing I'd be curious is. is what were some of the top takeaways that you took? Because there, obviously, like you said, there's lessons, right? We all sure. we all have lessons, and you know you got to learn from. Them. What were those to you that were that were the most valuable on just the particular property or just on this in general deal. on this deal? Yeah, definitely hiring the the right contractor makes a big difference uh, in pre screening. I mean, we were just like, hey, you're an AC guy, cool. I need an AC, come install it. But we weren't calling references. We didn't. Yeah. We didn't. You didn't vet them. We didn't. We didn't vet anybody. We didn't see any of their financial records. We uh, and then also, you don't want to co-mingle uh, contractors. They get really, really upset 
You mean uh, there at the same time? Type yeah. Thing? So like, if you have a plumber and electrician, it's like gangs, right? You don't want the gangs to be in the same. That's correct. Yeah, park. yeah. They yeah. just crips in the butts. Yeah, they don't want to hang. <laughs> <laughs> they want to. They want to work by themselves. They want their own space. I mean, it's stupid stuff. Like one guy might want some in Mexican mambo music. The other guy wants rap. <laughs> and now they're like cutthroat at each other. They're like literally, like, they'll scratch each other's cards. They'll steal Are each other's serious? tools. Oh man! One time, on a completely different topic. We rehabbed a house, and the client called me. It was just a, a roof. It was a roof job on an insurance claim. He's like, dude, y'all did an amazing job. But somehow, y'all left two full cases of beer in the attic. So my contractors, they were drinking and just dropping it in the attic, and then they riffed over. <laughs> wow. And then so from a general contractor standpoint, you're like, I mean, I'm kind of li- I am liable, but I didn't actually do the work. But then you're talking to the clients. And how do you defend something that you didn't even know you about? Know yeah, first yeah, place? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so but your uh, name is live. You know, your your name is out there. Is you know. Sure, sure. And we we went, and we cleaned it up, and we 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 made it right because that's what you do. If what some, you do. If your subs even do something bad, you still make it right. Sure. Yeah. Um, taxes in the beginning. Holy cows! I didn't realize the taxes that were on top of the material cost. And so that's eight and a half percent in the state of Texas, right across the board. So when you're writing your rehab bid and you're eight and a half percent off. And then it takes you 60 days to figure it out. Um, a lot of people will go to Home Depot and say, okay, that's $2. But they don't calculate the taxes. They don't calculate the delivery. They don't calculate the, the actual manpower to install it. Sometimes it's not just one person that has to install it. It's two people that have to sure. install it. And so that we slowly we slowly got and got some of that. Um, so you're estimating ability. Yeah, the estimating ability in the beginning. I mean, we literally were paying people to do their rehabs for probably our first 10 or 15 houses. And we were, we were like, all right, buy more real estate because we could support buying more real estate. And we were bound to determine we're gonna figure this thing out. Yeah. And uh, so there's a whole lot of a lot of mistakes like that. Um, a material that you actually use, you know, trying to rehab the property to what the rest of the houses are and taking out your personal opinion. That's huge. Because in the beginning we're like, oh, everybody likes this granite and oh we love this chandelier and who doesn't want a pergola on the back of their house you're getting emotional about it oh yeah yeah and, like a well and speaking about getting emotional about it you have to be able to just cut it off like i've been in investment properties today uh, probably one a month i don't know we get into it and we're like holy crap what did we get ourselves into and you got to find a way to dump it and just walk away exit. and move you gotta on be able to exit yeah, yeah now we have like four or five extra strategies so um and sometimes we're not just dumping them because we want to walk away sometimes it's just hey we're over uh, over leverage with our crews or hey we we might have thought something about this house that we no longer like um, like I just did one in the city of white settlement that I lost money on and I mainly lost money because they made me do stuff to do a certificate of occupancy um, they made me redo all the siding on the house even though it was nice and all painted and once you start removing inside or outside stuff and you expose stuff they're gonna add a lot more to, to sure, your list and if you don't pull permits holy cows if you don't pull permits and you get caught by the city they are not going to be nice. To they're you. not your friends oh, no. at that point. They are not your friends. They're not your friends if you pull permits. Yeah, and but if you don't, them. they're really pissed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It'll make gonna... your life miserable. Oh, they are absolutely atrocious, and there's certain cities that are worse. All right, so yeah. we're going to take a break. When we come back, yeah. I'd like to talk about paying vendors, paying contractors, sure. when you pay them, how you pay them, that that stuff. Yeah. So uh, we're here with Ron Carlson. This is Steve Rosenberg and my good friend Daryl Dyke, who doesn't have his fancy socks on this week. He's got his regular socks on. Look at that. We'll talk about that <laughs> later as well. Uh, this is Propelio TV, the Real Estate Power Hour, and we will be back right after the break. The Propelio Academy, an all-in-one education resource for training in wholesales, subject to wraps, short sales, flips, rentals, burr, property management, and more. Go to propelio.com slash academy to get your scholarship today. Propelio.com. What does Propelio offer? Lead generating websites. Access to true MLS comps. Off-market lead lists. And deal alerts. Get them all today at Propelio.com. Hey everyone, this is Steve Rosenberg and Daryl Dyke. We're here with Ron Carlson with Propelio TV in the Real Estate Power Hour. And uh, we just got a very valuable lesson on uh, hearing his <laughs> life-changing, altering $200,000 rehab mistake story, which is pretty good. How to lose money. How to lose how money. How to lose money in Real Estate 101. Yeah, how to lose money quickly. Um, <laughs> so now let, let's talk, we're talking about contractors 
and, and kind of the, the trials and tribulations that you dealt with with getting them and dealing with them, I want to talk about paying them. Because I always wonder if they're all sitting at the same cafe after you pay them the first draw, that they're all kind of hanging out. When you're like, where's my contractor today? Why isn't he on the job? And I always wonder if they're all kind of congregated together in this one little area, hanging out, <laughs> laughing at all of us investors going, it's nine o'clock, where, where are they? And they're like, oh, we're on another job today. We'll get you to, and they're giving right. a little chuckle at the cafe. Yeah, so, I'll give you the address of the cafe. If yeah, you, I, if you I'd love to go that. there. I'd love to find them, man. <laughs> so so how, how do you deal with, or how do you recommend dealing with you know contractors? And obviously you do this as well, but yeah. I'm guessing you have a, procedure of how to do it what's your take? yeah so the the best answer is never pay them till it's done that's okay. the best answer but sure. that's not the reality because from an investor standpoint and see when i used to hire contractors in the beginning i was coming at an investor standpoint owning a general construction company my perspective has changed completely because now i'm like now i got to protect my general contractor not my investment um, so the answer is don't ever pay them until the work is done uh, but the problem with that is someone's got to front the materials yep. and somebody's got to uh, front the the first draw. So if you pay them nothing, then now your contractor, let's say, has to come out of pocket three thousand dollars in materials, and he's paying his guys three thousand dollars. Right. And if you pay them a down payment, but you have zero work, now you as an investor, you're like, oh crap, that guy's gonna go to Vegas and bet it all on red. He's gonna call me and tell me he's on another job. He, and you want? Or he's at the cafe. And he's at the cafe, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, at the, the bottom line is you have to trust each other. Someone has to trust somebody before you can do it. Someone's got to extend that all yeah, brand not, to go, I'm trusting you, here's my money. It's not like you go to Best Buy, you're like, hey, I want to buy this. I have it in my hand, here's 20 bucks, and you walk out the door with it. There's a little bit more of a, a relationship. On a hard money loan, the hard money loan just haven't figured it out. I'm not paying you a dime until money, uh, work has started and, and I see That's the way we can do is that, it. Is that, is that how you do it? Is yeah, that, is that a non-negotiable? Like well, I, I will say... Yeah, for the most part, when, when a hard money lender does a loan, we don't give them any money up front to get started. Uh, we reimburse them for the work that's mm -hmm. completed. However, uh, if I have a good client, matter of fact, uh, one of my best clients in Houston called me on the... Are you falling asleep on me? I am. You're boring me. Let me get him a Red Bull. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You're boring Red me. <laughs> Can you speed this up? <laughs> anyway, uh, one of my best clients, he does new builds in Houston, called me on... Uh, it was yesterday, day for yesterday. He needs money. You know, he's like, I've got the framers out here. They, they, they've got like three, four other projects going. He's like, I need, I need to do a draw. This work will be done here. I know him. We do a lot of work with them. I'm sure. like, I'm like, no problem, dude. What, you know, what are you drawing on? So he told me what he was drawing. On. I think it was the framing and electrical. It'll be done within the next week. I have no doubt it'll get done. You know, because he probably, has a track record. Track record. And you probably have these relationships sure, too. Sure, sure. I wire him the money. Yeah. You know, because I know he's going to get it done. And I know he builds a good product. But you're right. For the most part, we don't give him the money up front. Yeah. So Which, who pays the contractor in this scenario? Do, the, if I'm the investor, I front the money, and then you pay me or back? Or the contractor fronts the money. Or the contractor's And out. then hopes that you pay him. And, normally, and he's using the hard money guy yeah. as the backstop. And normally the investor is giving the contractor some money up front, in my experience. Yes. Normally that's the case, right? Yes. But there again, you have to, there's a trust factor. And it's it's not a, it's a, it is a problem when you're doing these single family um, houses because you don't know who the contractor is, you don't know who the investor is, and they could both be shady. Sure. It's not a problem. What? If, if shady it, people in real estate? <laughs> <laughs> More than honest people, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it's like a government contract and you're building a bridge and there's bonds and there's loans and stuff like that, a whole completely different story when you're working with, say, the city of Dallas. Are they going to pay you or not? It's real easy for a contractor to be like, look, I'm going to bid it high, I'm going to take out a loan, I'm going to charge them my interest. I know I'm going to get paid in 120 days and it's not a big it's deal. It's a done deal. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of it is where you're at in, in your business. Um, when we hire a new sub, and we hire new subs all the time, my first rule is when you hire somebody, you have to be willing to fire them. Um, and that typically goes back to don't hire your brother, don't hire your mother, because if you fire your mom, your Thanksgiving is going to be real awkward, right? Yeah. Super Good awkward. Um, and then you just have, you, you have to trust them. Most subs are going to require 25 to 50% up front. Uh, and I even have guys now that require money up, up front, like my granite guy, or I was just talking to, we're doing a commercial building uh, that we bought that's pretty sick. Um, and my carpet guy was here and he's like, well, I just need half up front. Well, he's taking my money. He's going to go buy the material. He's going to float the labor for free when it's done. And I'm like, okay, you're good. And then I'm going to pay him the rest. And then he gets paid when it's done. Right. But otherwise he's going to spend thousands of dollars in material which is okay when you're on one job, but when you're on 10 or 15 or 20 jobs, yeah. then someone's in a bind. And this is a huge gap. Yeah. Gap. And then so sometimes what happens is a contractor's in 10 jobs and they have $5,000 checks from 10 different people. 
And then they started getting expenses or they started paying their employees and like, oh crap, I don't have enough. And that's where all this 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 goes. Um, one thing that I've learned just recently, if you have an account set up just for your funds, uh, and I think this is what hard money lenders do too, they kind of have different accounts set up uh, segregated, then you can actually keep watch on that account and how much is being spent and where that money is being spent versus just giving it to a contract and let them commingle it all into to one. Is that is that how you do it, Daryl? Or I mean, we have the money allocated where they can get, they can log into a site online and see how much money they have left and what they've drawn on and so forth. So they can keep and track the, of that. can you see like they drew this much for the carpet and this much for we keep track of that on there when they when they first start the, the loan. Sheet. Yeah, they gave us a draw sheet which basically so, shows us you know foundation six thousand dollars whatever. So as they go through that process, we're checking those items off. So we have a working draw sheet that shows where they're at in the process. Okay, got yeah, it. The process. So. How would you recommend somebody who's new in this, right? How how do they have that? You know, to me, it's all about setting the expectations. Yeah. Right? Having that initial conversation and saying, look, this is what I expect of you, and this is what you can expect of me. And if neither of us performs, if we have to divorce each other, this is how this is going to go down. And I and I've learned that you know from hard knocks, you've got to talk about the divorce. Yeah, the divorce will happen. You've got to talk about when when the shit hits the fan, this is how this is going to go down. It's not going to be emotional. This is how we're going to do this. Sure. If you don't perform and if you don't deliver on time, this is how you're going to be penalized. What you know, however you want to handle it, but how do you recommend, you know, again, we've all done this for quite a while. Yeah. We we've taken our licks and and we kind of our tolerance is little when you're someone new, right? If if you were you back in 2009, 2010, and you were doing this and you didn't really have the confidence to go, man, I can't tell this contractor how it's gonna be, he's yeah. gonna tell me. How would you recommend a, a new investor talk and set those expectations with the vendor? All right, so there's a couple things. Um, let's just say that we have an agreement, I'm gonna give you what X amount up front, okay? From that point forward, you're only getting paid when work is done. I don't care how much you spent on it, I don't care if you're running behind or you're ahead, it's only when work is done from that point forward. That's, and that's, then, the, that's the trigger. Yeah, because, okay, so uh, earlier I was talking about I lost like twenty one and $24,000. The reason why I lost money on that is because I was paying that guy $2,500 a week. Okay? I didn't pay him based upon what work he did, and my contract was very vague as well. I mean, it was literally like, here, you're going to do all this stuff with a number at the bottom. Right. And it, was, it was horrible. But so write your bid really, really, really detailed, and this is also going to help out your hard money lender. If you have a very detailed bid and you submit it to your hard money lender, a lot of times they'll use that as the draw schedule. For example, don't take a kitchen and put it in one category, five thousand dollars. I want to know upper cabinets, lower cabinets, backsplash. You know what kind of countertop? Itemization. Yeah, because that's exactly then, what you you have to do that with your hard money lender. And you're right, so many new investors do that. Bathroom, three grand. Yeah, but if <laughs> kitchen, you, but not only not only does it help you on the draw schedule. It helps you when you're getting your appraisal done. Like, I don't. What are you doing for that money in the kitchen? Sure. I need to know. Are you putting granite? Are you redoing the cabinets? What type of flooring? What type of appliance package? Detail, detail, detail. Mm -hmm. Then it helps you get the value that you deserve on that project. And it also helps you keep your contractor accountable. Now you're okay. Hey, you painted. Congratulations, I'm, I'm painting. When I learned this, it was with a hard money lender. Uh, we we were re -sand we were sanding a floor in a bedroom and they stained it. So we couldn't get in that bedroom. So we painted the whole house, but we did not paint that that bedroom. This was for a client. And they called for a draw, and we had put it in the draw request X amount for the paint. And the, the hard money said, no, you're getting none. Well, why? We're missing two walls of paint. They're like, paint's not done. You're not getting it. And you have to be that strict, I think. Because wow. if you're not that strict, you got, then yeah. what happens is the contractor always thinks he's 90% done. In reality, he's 50% done. And so you pay him as if he's 90% done. But the reality is, but the he's reality not. is, he's 50% done. If you have to fire him, now you're out that additional money yep. on 50 different items. Now but he's if you ahead always of you. pay when it's 100% done, you know exactly where you're at and how, how you're on track. So every time that there's going to be a draw, like Daryl, every time there's going to be a draw, do you send someone out there to verify before yeah. you, oh, yeah. you do? So who does this? Is this someone who works for you? Is yeah, we have an inspector that goes out and verifies the work is completed. No? Yeah, third party. Yeah. And is this is this someone on salary for you? Is it no. someone that the the the, the investor really is paying for that, right? They pay for it. They pay a draw fee. Um, you know, we send an inspector out there. They inspect the, the draw that they're requesting. When you say inspector, is it like a licensed inspector or is this a, a Daryl inspector? Like, <laughs> well, you know, 
It's Daryl Jr. Daryl Jr. We call him DJ. <laughs> DJ, DJ, go out to that property. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now we have an inspector that it's not like an inspector that right. where you get a house inspected, but they they know the construction process. He, he could process. be a contractor that yeah. knows what's going on. It's like yeah. these walls are not. I mean, it's common sense. These walls are not painted. That's that has yeah. not, not only has is it done list. though, is it done correctly? You know what I mean? That's correct. Because there's a difference between painting a wall and did you paint it and primer it and that's exactly is it, right. is it all textured the way that it should be? Or they just go in there and paint Slap it like and goofy, paint on it. So is it, let me ask you this then: Is it is there some interpretation there? I mean, is it like the guy goes, "Hey, man, this is good," and you're like, "That's shitty. That ain't good. That ain't, I'm not sure." Sure. Sometimes it can be subjective, right? And so, then it's. I mean, you're holding the money, so you got the keys, right? Well, at that point, we have a conversation. You know, if if we send the inspector out and they say, "Well, this this work being done is shoddy," and then the investor calls and says, "DJ says this is a no go." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the investor is like, "I don't know what he's talking about." Well, I'm like, "Well, then all three of us need to have a conversation at that point." Whether we meet at the property or whatever we do, but I mean, all that's you can work that out. Do but they, if it's shoddy work? You don't want to, just like he said, you don't want your contractor to get ahead of you for shoddy work. You want to pay him when the work is completed, because once he's ahead of you, now you're screwed. Yeah. Now you're stuck with him, or you. Yeah, you're at his mercy. You're now. taking the losses. You're like you yeah, said, if like, he's ahead of you, it's like you fire him. You paid him for something ahead. you didn't do, yeah. and then you hire someone to come do what he didn't do or right or what he did wrong, and then now you have a conflict too, because anytime you mix com- uh, contractors. They will always disagree with each other. Oh, yeah. I, I guarantee two you. Two artists. You take, They're like two artists. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah. You take two foundation guys. You go to a house. One will come up with one pure count. One will come up with another count. You take two electricians. One will say, oh, he did this wrong. The other one thinks he's the electrician god, right? They will never, ever, ever yeah. agree with you. So now your price is more because they're going to, this I gotta, contractor. I got to fix what he screwed up. Yeah. So this is more money now. That's correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that's not how you were supposed to do it. You're supposed to remove yeah. all the sheetrock and then put it up. It's not 221, just it. not 220 line now. Yeah. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let me, real quick though on this. So when when Daryl Jr. goes to the property, and, and do they ever, do they film this? Do they take pictures? Take to, pictures. Uh, take pictures? Take pictures, yeah. And then that's how, that's kind of the, the no nonsense proof. Sure. You're looking at this going, look, man, this is not done. That's our yeah. eyes, you know. There's no, our right. eyes for the Hardman Lynn. That's our eyes on the street. The only thing you can't see in the pictures is the quality of the work. But typically true. the person, especially if they're working with a hard money lender, they're seeing houses all day long. They know what good and bad quality is. And that also determines the neighborhood. You can have good quality. I buy $150,000 homes, $120,000 homes. I can get away with a lot of stuff you can't get away with in a $500,000 home. Right. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I, I have a new guy on my team. I sent him to a house today to film it. Because he just wants to do it, and he's like, "Oh, it's a nice house." He goes, "It's not perfect, but it's a nice house." Like it's a hundred fifty thousand dollars house. I no, go go find something it's else. It's a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I understand that I'm not decking this thing out because right. I can. So <laughs> let's let's talk about this. I'm curious. I think this would be helpful for the for the listeners out there. You know, I always try to think of people that viewers, are, the viewers, the viewers, yes, and listeners. Because it's probably on TV. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I'm thinking of my radio show. Yes, I know. You you're, you get around too much, yes. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, for someone starting out, or maybe they've only done a few, you know, working with a contractor, how you vet them, how much money do you want to give them up front, how do they manage that process? Because in my experience, people that are new to real estate, that's very intimidating for them. Sure. You know, hiring someone to fix this house, they're at their mercy, you know, how much money do they give them up front, how, how do they vet them, what process would you recommend they go through? Well, so I think you need to take a step back before, when you get a bid on a house, I think you should need to get three bids. Because what happens when you get three bids is one contractor will sh- remind you of other stuff that's not on this bid, and vice versa. Like this person might have wanted to add a wall, this person wants to add travertine. So now you have a comparable and you know that you're not getting ripped off just on price because they should all be probably within 10%. If one's spiked really high, it might not be because he's a bad contractor. He might just saw other stuff that the other other guy said. Yeah, he may be the yeah. guy who's right. <laughs> if, you're, yeah. if you have a hard money lender, that's actually a good way to start because the hard money lenders are there. They're seasoned, and they can be like, "No, nah, dude, you don't even know what's going to fix them to go down because there's no way that you're paying twenty one dollars a square foot for paint." Yeah. Right. Uh, so the hard money lender can keep you safe. Calling references, almost nobody does it. Don't call family members because there again, family members are always vouch. Oh yeah, he, my son's. Yeah, he's awesome at whatever he's he He's a does. good boy. He's good. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> DJ. Yeah. He made the honor roll in fourth grade. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He has good intentions. That's what they say. He has That's good intentions. Uh, I would trust him with my life. Yeah. yeah. His mom. Yeah, you're right. So many people so many people don't call references. Yeah. Like, they ask for references, but they don't take the yeah. time to They're call They're like, well, them. if they gave me them, they've got to be legit. You know? Yeah, well, they gave me references. They've got to be good. They wouldn't give me bad references. Yeah, well, um, who would do that? Right? You should physically go to a property that they're in that's similar to yours. Uh, what I see happen a lot of times is contractors like, oh, look what I've done. I've done all this great stuff. And what ends up happening is they say, oh, I got a gold nugget. That's good, man. I know. Man, yeah. Daryl's gotten like three. I don't know if I've gotten any, by the way. On the <laughs> oh, yeah, we're, we're working on it. We're going to get there. Don't you worry. I want a nugget. Uh, we little, will get you there. I want a little nugget. rabbit trail. Yeah, I'll get um, one. <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, what? Go into the houses. Check oh, out yeah, the houses. Oh, yeah. Check out the houses. Check out the work they do. Because otherwise what happens is... Uh, they say, I, I worked on this property, and this property is gorgeous, and it's amazing, but they installed the screen window on it. So they technically worked on it, yeah. but they did not do all the heavy lifting on it, the sure. digging and the, the finish yeah. out yeah, and stuff like that. It. That's correct. Yeah. People yeah. Say, technically, oh, I was on site. I worked on. Yeah. yeah, this is one that we worked on for, for 90 days. Yeah, that's great. You were there for 90 days, but you weren't, you know what I'm saying? Sure, like, yeah. you got fired or whatever it is. Um, and then if you can actually meet somebody at the property that they're currently working on, that's huge too. You'll get so much out of and just seeing the a real I, conversation. I, I've learned too is just seeing how they keep the job site. Like sure. There, you know how uh, is it? Is it just a cluster? Does it look like a bomb went off, or is they are they organized? Do they have their stuff? To, you know what I mean? Like that to me, like when you walk in and you see a job site going on and it just looks. I mean, I'm sure you, we've all seen oh, yeah, them, right? Yeah. You're just like, what is going on here? It's just like chaos, right? Yeah. And to me, that tells me a lot. Just it doesn't tell me the quality or anything like that, but it tells you something about how they're running their business. Sure, you know, and that kind of stuff. Um, going back to your question about how much do you give them, always is as little as possible. Yeah. But there has to be a compromise there. Um, I would think that somewhere between five and ten thousand is probably pretty standard. Is that what, what you see? A lot of times they're asking for a percentage. Or a percent. I was yeah. Say so percentile. there it is. Which uh, can be dangerous, right? Well, I mean, sure. If you had a hundred thousand dollar rehab, yeah. And you gave ten percent. Well, now you know now. On, typically on larger, you're doing a large, a lower percent, five or ten percent. Yes, yes. On uh, we used to have a policy if we were twenty five hundred dollars or less, I just want a hundred percent up front. And people, well, I'm not giving you hundred percent up front. I'm like, I'm gonna be done with it tomorrow. So by the time <laughs> you give me half up front and you come back for it, you're gonna delay me like five days when I can just kick it out. Yeah. And. Uh, some people have problems that most people they were repeat clients. So they, well, they, and, they and I think a lot of the people that do that they don't really understand what they're doing. They were told don't sure. give it all up front. Yeah, so they're yeah. like, I'm gonna rip the check in half and I'll give you the other half when you finish, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll do and then we'll tape it together at the bank. You yeah. know. Um, now, what I'm curious about is is when do you actually make the decision to fire a contractor? When you can't take it anymore. Okay. Yeah. So uh, a lot of people are like. I've had, I hear this taught in real estate circles, and I'm not for it, is penalize your contractor, charge him $100 a day for every day that he's late, mm -hmm. right? Where I don't think you should do that. Um, one, it's not incentivizing for the contractor. Sure. Right? Normally, he's giving you a bid that he has to honor no matter the timeline. Not no, uh, you know, so if he's running early or late, you're paying him the same. Right. I used to try to flip it on people, and they would get real mad. I'd be like, okay, let's do this. I'll do $100 a day. But I want you to do five hundred dollars a day for every day I'm early. Well, it's got to play both ways. Sure. You can't just give me an infinitive contract and then I don't get a contract. I don't it's, get it's any win -win. at all. That's correct. Yeah. Sure. Well, and then what ends up happening is if you start penalizing them, then they start skipping corners. So it looks like they did the right job, but they cut so many corners. That cheaper's you can't not cheaper. Because they're tired of getting penalized. That's yep. correct. And yep. then and then at some point they're just going to walk away because if they've already spent all of their money, now they're paying you to do their rehab. Why would they stay there? They would just rather be like they go to me. another job that's yeah, gonna pay them full. Go do um, they're gonna do something else. So I don't like the the penalty, but um, I would say if they're about ten percent, fifteen percent late within reason uh, by days. So if you had like a sixty day contract and they're two weeks, three weeks behind, Could I you would do that a percentage. Like, I mean, or do you just say if you're two weeks, if it's a, you know, if it's a long term. I mean, you had the you had the you had a marriage, you had a two year marriage yeah. on that one. Two weeks is probably nothing, right? So it's it's you know it, obviously yours was a different story, yeah, yeah. but is it? Do you recommend that they say, hey, if you're you know if, if it's a if it's less than sixty days, it's a one week. If it's more than well, sixty days, you know what I mean. You gotta you gotta kind of count your risk versus your loss because sometimes it's better to walk with that guy for six extra weeks sure. and just have him finish it, and then go hire this contractor that's gonna go say he did everything wrong, and then your cost is three times more than holding it for another six. You weeks. You have to learn how to bite your tongue. 
yeah, and, yeah. and when you correct a contractor, we <laughs> learned this the hard way. We used to go and be like, this sucks. They're like, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll show you sucks. Oh, yeah. no. The, the, the next day. <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. The, yeah. <laughs> Just wait. The next day, they're at the cafe talking to all their buddies. And and they're, they're not they're there, right? GC yeah. Cafe. Not, that's yeah. right. Yeah. They're not you have even... to manage them, you know? Sure. You have to manage. And it's relationship. And you're right. Once you're, once you're in deep with them, as long as you think they can get there, you're, some people would rather just, you know, yell at them or fire them. But yeah. from a, from a, if, if you're using logic, which you should be doing on a business deal, you've got to, okay, I'm already in with this guy. I know sure. he can finish it. I just got to figure out how to manage him properly. You know, what, what I always say is, do you want to win or do you want to be right? You know, if you want to be right, you're going to fire him and make a point. But if you want to win, you'll work with the guy and get him there sure, eventually. Sure. To a certain point, like you well, said, until you can't take it anymore. That's right. Well, and, you know, you got another nugget, by the way, I saw. No, that was my nugget. Uh, I'm taking uh, his nugget. Yeah, I think it was his, <laughs> actually. All right, yeah. y'all need him. Y'all are fine. Yeah, uh, but, you know, the, based on what you said, the, the winning and being right, you know, what I've always said is, is, look, you know, you can be right with no money or you can win with the money. Meaning, yeah. like, I can tell you that I'm better than you and I've got all the money and you should leave. And I showed you that I'm right, but now I'm going to lose financially because yeah. now I got to go pay another contractor. I can go, you know what? I get it. Let's just get through this. Let's plug it and let's keep on sure. going. And you know what? I win financially because I didn't have to go ahead and double down or triple down to yeah. get another contractor there. But, but a lot of people's ego get in the it's way. It's an ego their thing. Their ego and their pride get in the way, yep. you know? Absolutely. And then they, they want to be right. Well, yeah. and I, I'll, I'll, I'd rather take the win all day long. Personally. I agree. I, 100%. Sometimes you have to be careful, though, because that contractor is a good sales guy. Very true. And he's just like talking and talking and talking, and there you are believing what he is. So at some point, you just have to have a cutoff point. Like, if they haven't showed up for like a week in a row for good reason, if they start having family issues, always, every single time they have family issues, they are going to be turned into a bad contractor. Man, I'm having problems with my wife. It's so I'm funny, man. That's so Someone true. Got sick. That some drama uh -huh. around them. Somebody broke yeah. into my yeah, car yeah. and they yeah. stole my identity. It's like, Really? Like, how does that happen? I've never, it's just all of a sudden, every drama in the world happens to them. And you know what's weird is some of them, it really does happen to them. I'm like, sure. show me the paperwork. And they actually show me the paperwork. I'm like, but there's a reason this? why drama surrounds them. You're right. You well, there's normally a reason. We, there is. We, sometimes we put contractors in what we call timeout. Timeout. Yeah, well, you're timeout. in timeout. We don't, we'd say that internally, we don't say that to them. But we're like, we're just not doing business for a while. A perfect example, I had a contractor. Put them on ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like just that give me, give me. Actually, that should be a nugget. There, go. Give there me, you go. There you go. The nugget. I there told you we get you this. I got a nugget. I, I had a contractor one time. He had all of his guys were illegal. Uh, I hire illegal people, but sometimes they hire illegal people. That's not right. my problem. That's theirs. Um, maybe I'm part of the problem. I don't know. <laughs> we'll skip over that so, part. Yeah. <laughs> so they had, uh, they had like four fourplexes or something like that, and there were like 16 guys living in this little community, all the same thing. One night. Uh, they got raided. They all got deported. 16 guys he lost. But he then he came to me. He's like, look, man, it's all right. We got like a two-man crew. We can still take care of you. No, you can't. Yeah. Like you just How? lost your whole entire team. Yeah. <laughs> right? So like you just have to be like, look, we're just going to walk away from each other because we have to. Right? If you can't take it, if you're like your spouse is getting crazy about it, your business partner is getting crazy about it, you're more than maybe 15, 20% past your deadline. They start hitting you for all this change orders at the end. That's a contractor trick. Underbid it, and then, hey, now you're locked into me. And then maybe you just come in and have another contractor. What can you finish this up for? What right. could your timeline be before you fire them? And then when you do fire them, you lock up the house, you take videos, you take pictures, you timestamp them, you take all their junk and put it in a nice pile. Don't let them back in the house because the first thing they're going to do when they come back in their house is take your material. Yeah, I get oh, it. Yeah. All right, First well, we're going to take a break, and when yeah. we come back, we'll wrap it up. I'd like to talk about what are some of the top things that investors should focus on fixing when they're doing one? Like, what is a waste of money? What is a good use of their money? So sure. uh, this is Steve Rosenberg and Mr. Daryl Dyke and Mr. Ron Carlson. This is Propelio TV, the Real Estate Power Hour, and we will be back after this break. The Propelio Academy, an all-in-one education resource for training in wholesales, subject to wraps, short sales, flips, rentals, burr, property management, and more. Go to propelio.com slash academy to get your scholarship today. Propelio.com. What does Propelio offer? Lead generating websites. Access to true MLS comps, off-market lead lists, and deal alerts. Get them all today at Propelio.com. Hey, 
Hey. Welcome back. You're listening to the... Were you trying to steal No, my I wasn't. I wasn't. I'm sorry. I'll let you go. It's I your mean, day. It's a Daryl day. I got you a nugget. Now I you know. I did get a nugget. I did. All right. Go ahead. Sorry. Anyway, uh, Steve, you want to take it? <laughs> Steve Rosenberg, Daryl Dyke, the Real Estate Power Hour, talking to Ron Carlson here. Lots of good information from Man, Ron. tons of uh, some good stuff, some I, good takeaways. I may replace good. you with Ron, just wow. so you know, because it's... <laughs> I figured, you know you said that out loud. Use your outside <laughs> voice. With you. you may want to wait till I leave when you uh, replace me. So, I do have uh, a contract. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's all negotiable. That's true. Anyway, yeah, uh, apparently everything's negotiable from yeah, what we're learning. Yeah, you Ron, see the trade clause this in there. Been, yeah, exactly. This is such valuable information. Though. I mean, dealing with the contract. Absolutely, man. All the all the stuff you've gone through. It makes huge. or breaks you. I, I mean, oh, yeah. I think it's the most important piece of the whole puzzle. Of everything. We do. There's a lot of money out there. Yeah, a lot. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So. Um, one of the things, you know, we're going to wrap up here soon. I, I wanted to talk about, you know, when people get into this industry, nobody really knows what they should and shouldn't fix. What's the best bang for the buck for money? You know, if, if I was new into this and I was just getting into this and I had a property, where should I spend my focus, my money, my, my concentration to make look good? And other things you're like, that's, you can leave that plain vanilla, not a big deal. Yeah, first look at your comps. I don't, uh, that's the number one thing. I bought a house one time in Arlington for cheap, and it was only priced at like 90000 I didn't touch it. It had orange carpet in it. It had pink tile in it, and I listed it at a price. Sounds like it, your van you drive around in. It was, it was the <laughs> cheapest house in Arlington at the time, and people were like, it's not worth that much. I was like, it's the cheapest house. Like, how can it find something else that you can live in that's going to shelter you for this price? You can't. Right. And so... I, I was actually able to push my value on that, even though it looked really, really, really dated. But comps are, are your number one thing. Um, and it depends on what you're going to do with it, too. Are you flipping it or are you renting it? You can skimp point. on a rental. You can yeah. keep your dated 1950s green whatever you want in there because it's good functionally and it's going to rent out. Um, and then if you're going into the flip, kind of get familiar with your extra strategy, FHA and conventional. Man, I just get smoked all the time. And I'm seasoned at this about repairs for the uh for for repairs for the lender so they go into their their option period and then the appraiser goes out there and appraiser somehow has the authority to tell me i need to put paint on the outside of my house even though yeah whatever so uh that happens a lot and you just budget for um know what those repairs are to know if you're going fha if you're going conventional if you're flipping now here's a trick that we use as investors we purposely don't fix stuff but I have a beautiful looking house. Uh, uh, an example of something that I do not fix is uh, I typically don't fix my Federal Pacific boxes that are inside my older houses. The lender comes, the appraiser comes, they do an inspection. Oh my gosh, the house is going to burn down. It's got all the, you know, when you get an inspection report, they roll out a scroll and it don't matter how nice the house is, there's a zillion things. Yeah. And I know Job there's security, a, man. They got to show you all the no's. I know there's a zillion things on there, but I don't want to fix them all. So I purposely don't put that electrical box in my repairs. Because then they come back and they're like, the house is going to burn down and all this other stuff is wrong. I'm like, whoa, 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 all that other stuff might be wrong. But what if I just fixed the electrical box? Which I could have fixed it before. So you like leave it out there as the, as the, yeah, as yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. bait. So you leave the smoking gun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, Don't I just, look over here. Look over here. Yeah, so yeah. then they're like, well, okay, I, I can live with a drip and faucet and this and this and this. Whatever that, whatever's on that list. Right. I'm not saying it's a bad rehab. There's just a zillion things right. on there the always list. Is. And I'll, I'll put a 1500 of the box in, which is in my... Bid it's in the already first in there. place, right. but now I'm not paying additional money at, at so the end. So that's being strategic. Very strategic. So yeah. now let me ask you this. So, but like, I, I, what I'm talking about is, is like, you get in, you get someone in there, and you know, do they focus on the kitchen? Do they focus on the bathroom? Do they, you know what I mean? Like, what, once they're in there and they go, okay, I got to do a rehab. Yeah. Where? What is the best? I don't say bang. I keep saying bang for the buck, but what? What's the best use of their money that gets them the money back out? You sure. Know? Um, I would start with curb appeal. Showing up to the house is, is the very first thing. Right. Anytime you open up a wall in a house, anytime your expense is going to go up. Yeah. You're, you're going to have some sort of termite damage. You're going to have some short, sort of uh, whatever. And then I, I personally think it's kitchens, then bathrooms. Sure. Okay. Uh, I think, 80, what do they say? 80% of the time is spent in the kitchen? Yeah. You maybe in the bathroom, flip flop, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that, um, well, the, I think the kitchen sells the women. And I think space sells the men. Sure. So okay. if you can do something to include, increase your closets, you have extra storage and extra shed, um, things like that, then the men are, are all over that. And, I mean, what do we do in the bathroom? We wash ourselves because we're dirty and we go to potty, right? Like, I mean, right. people want to relax and have these big tubs, but that's all a uh, uh, price But point. they don't use them. 
Not really. No. no. I mean, how much time do you really spend uh, in the bathroom? But what does mean? that? Yeah. Do you think that sells it more? Does that? Do, if, if you have this nice jacuzzi spa that you know no one's ever going to use, does that sell? Does no. That... A perfect example is we've done ADA houses, ADA compliant, right? Which you spend a lot of money to make ADA compliant, but your clientele is that big. Yes. Yeah. And another thing are uh, I don't know what they're called. They're like these stand-in shower things that you shut them, and they have all these jacuzzi jets on them for. Old people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm gonna get one of those. Steve has one. I do. One of those. <laughs> I got one coming on. They're like they're like sometimes five to ten thousand yeah. dollars, but they don't increase the value of the house right. five to ten thousand dollars. I always yeah. tell people you can put gold inside this house, but it doesn't mean it's gonna increase the value. You have to update it to what the clients in that neighborhood are gonna be. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, kitchen though. I mean, dollar for dollar. Kitchen, kitchen. Yes. You kitchen, almost bathroom. get in the kitchen. I think right. I, I think that uh, dollar for dollar you get in in the kitchen, and then. Sometimes, depending upon the condition of the house, will depend upon what you do. For example, there's a new product out there called SPC, uh, sand plastic composite. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's uh, all 100% it? PVC. <laughs> yeah, who hasn't heard of it? I'm like, I'm <laughs> Googling it right yeah. now. Go to self. Um, Is that the SPCA or? No, I'm when, uh, when the foundation's shanked and it's doing this thing, it's a floating product and it's 100% waterproof, so I can cover up the float by using this product. Oh, or right. if I have a slab, that's in really good shape, then I might do something like carpet or vinyl plank because I can lay that flat and it's not going to look all bubbly, but it will look bubbly on a house that was shanked on the foundation. Sure. So sometimes you choose the quality based upon, uh, I mean, at that point, we're kind of covering up some stuff, not necessarily fixing it wrong because we're floating right. it and all that, but it Just won't. Just the aesthetics. Yeah, it won't look right if you use well, it, other it, products. You know, it's like when I, I've talked to investors that they want to buy a property and, um, you know, they'll say like, I'm going to, I want to put a new roof on it. And I say, well, why do you want to put a roof on it? Yeah. Go, well, because it looks old. And I go, well, is it leaking? Right. No, it's not leaking, but I just think it looks old. I'm like, okay, if it's not leaking and there's nothing wrong with it, it's not, it's not, first of all, it's not going to get you more money in rent. That's correct. If you put a dollar in, you should get $2 out. So you're not going to get that. It's not going to help you. Why would you put the money into it? Unless you want to do a capital improvement for a down the road thing. Sure, sure. But and that's my opinion. You know, people say like, I want to put new windows in. I'm like, well, are the windows messed up? Are they, you know, what, sure. what's the reason behind it? Sure. You're not, it's not going to take a house from 1300 to 1900. That's correct. So it's not going to get you. And that's the thing when I talk to investors and they're like, I want to do this. I want to do that. That's just their opinion. They're not looking at it from a business standpoint and going, if you're going to put anything in, put it in the kitchen, put it in the bathroom. That's where you should invest. There in. are some things I think you should uh, always replace. The Any valve that is underneath all your faucets, I think you should replace those all the time because nine out of 10 times, these houses haven't been lived in or maintained that we're buying. And once you start using your faucets like they should be used, then that's where your leak's going to be. That's so you happens. could put thousands of dollars. I just, I have a rental right now. My hot water heater went out on it. It flooded half of the house, all the carpets damaged, the sheetrock's damaged, the baseboard's damaged. My cost to fix that's $2,100. And I'm a, like, I know the people that are going to fix it. That's my true cost. I'm putting a new hot water heater in that, that property. So uh, anytime that there's a hazard, you want to fix it. Like right. anything, like for us, a hot water heater, 10, 12 years old, we're just going to replace it because we know it's, if that pan bro breaks out and it rusts out, that's $2,000 of the damage and then I'm going to have to fix it anyway. Yep. Sure. Absolutely. Right. Um, there's uh, smoke detector batteries. I don't know why we never replace those things, but sure enough, if you're don't put a smoke detector battery in, then when you put it on the market, it's going to be chirping when the realtor is in there, and then they're going to be talking about what the chirp is, not about your beautiful kitchen. Yeah. Um, I read an article just recently saying that painting the front door is the best bang for your buck. Yeah, and Probably, door handle. Yeah, we're talking the last switch plate covers. Uh, Door yeah. handles, always big on door handles. Yeah. You know, first thing you touch, you know, the front door, yeah. you look at it, first thing well, you touch. And even just cleaning up inside that, that you know, there's yeah. a typical little porch or something right there. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what y'all call it. But yeah, if you got a beehive in there, yeah. that's my first impression. I'm like, or well, even just, just spider webs, it just doesn't sure, look maintained. Sure. Yeah. 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 And, you know, it's like, I mean, I, even like a switch plate covers. It's, those are cheap. Oh, but unbelievably they, cheap. You don't believe how yellow they are yeah. until you take them off sure. and you put a white one on, you're like, whoa. Sure. Like yeah, that was a huge difference. A huge It's little things like that. And, and, you know, again, a lot of people go for these big, you know, I want to do the yeah. roof. Paint like, for sure. Uh, there's almost, uh, I would sometimes buy houses in really good shape. And once you start to remove the furniture, you get the yep. hair mark from the grease when they're, yep. they got greasy hair. Yep. And you got, like Daryl's. <laughs> Daryl's moose. <laughs> yeah, his moose is all against the wall. He's got his, hair in view. His yeah, long flowing hair. <laughs> so like when uh, like uh, when they're sleeping on the bed, and they're, they're, yeah. once you pull the bed and the picture frames the away, then you'll see everything yeah. that, that is in there. And it's typically like, oh, That's this true. is disgusting, right? Yeah, it's yep. very true. Yep. Yeah. Well, I think we're uh, about out of time. Yep. Ron, thank you for coming. Yeah, yeah man, man, thanks so yeah, much. That was great, great information. information. It was good information. Really yeah, good absolutely. information. We could, we could go for another 
five shows uh, with Ron. Right? I yeah. got so many horror stories I'm not proud of, but you hey, can we all have them. You we have to have a horror story yeah. special. Oh, that would be good, man. That'd be, I like that'd be that. a great show. Yeah, right? a horror story we, day. We once uh, looked at a house with a burn print of a body in it. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Well, you know, I got I got a, I got one. So in uh, in <laughs> one of our Speaking rental of properties stories, in uh, uh, in Houston, awesome. uh, we had uh, you know w- as soon as a property goes vacant, we'd get the power turned on right away. In the lower income areas, because they would go and strip the house sure. of wiring. Yeah. So we'd get the power turned on right away. And so one day, me and my business partner go to one of our properties over off of navigation on yeah. not the best area. And we go there, and there's this huge black mark on the box. And oh. So they obviously tried to cut the power. Sure, sure. I'm like, I would have paid just to see that happen, Oof. just for a little justice, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we yeah. got horror stories, lots yeah. of them. Well, on that note, I'll let you take it out, Daryl. Are you sure it's okay? No, it's, it's your day, man. <laughs> Anyway, thank you for joining us. Thank another thank you for Ron Carlson, uh, our partner in crime, Steve Rosenberg. You're listening to the Real Estate Power Hour. And if you need to contact one of us, Steve owns uh, Empire Industries, so it's EmpireIndustriesLLC.com. Check out their website. Of course, my mortgage company is Noble Mortgage and Investments, so we can be reached at NobleMortgage.com. And we will see you next week. Thank you. Bye bye. Boom. How, how do you want to get a hold of you, Ron? Oh, uh, you can call me on my cell phone, 817-566-4346. <laughs> Hit him there on the you cell. go. Hit him on the hip. Hit him on the hip. <laughs> Hit him on the hip. <laughs> See you guys. Bye-bye. Propelio TV is sponsored by Noble Mortgage and Investments, Batch Gift Tracing, Think Multifamily, CreativeCashflow.com, and Lifener. Thank you everybody for showing up to the Propelio event. We had a great time. Uh, it's huge as always. We love everybody that came. If this is your first event, you know, go, jump on Facebook, jump on YouTube, let us hear it. Let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, we love feedback. Uh, anytime we could do something better, we want to do that. If this is your second event, your third event, your 10th event, let us hear that too. Uh, we're trying to create a community here where everybody comes together. So thank you so much for being here and we'll see you at the next one.